please give a warm welcome to the CEO of Waymo, Mr. John Kraftchik. Well, hello and guten Morgen. It's an honor to be here with you in Frankfurt to kick off IAA 2019. I'd like to recognize Chancellor Merkel, President Matthias, State President Bouffier, and all the other illustrious attendees here with us this morning. So today, I'm gonna to be introducing you to Waymo. So first thing, we're not Google, and we're not a car company. We're also not a self-driving car company. Rather, we're a technology company, and we're building the world's most experienced driver. We call it the Waymo driver. And it's our mission to make it safe and easy for people and things to move around the world. So let's start with safety. Every year, 1.35 million people die around the world in traffic crashes. To put it in other terms, it's as if an Airbus A320 with 150 people aboard was crashing every hour of every day all year long. And 50 million injuries worldwide are caused by vehicle crashes every year. And two out of three people will be involved in a drunk driving crash in their lifetime. It's pretty horrible statistics. There's a central theme to almost all of these incidents. 94% of the time, human error is the root cause. For many of us, too, beyond safety, the freedom that comes with a driver's license isn't even a possibility. In many developed countries, more than 20% of the population isn't able to drive due to vision impairment or some other physical disability. But with fully autonomous driving technology, we've got the promise to unlock opportunities for those who don't have the opportunity to drive today and to make a big improvement in road safety. So, our team at Waymo has been hard at work solving this problem for the last 10 years. And one way to think about this, we put the Waymo driver through what must be the world's toughest and longest driving test. We've driven autonomously 16 million kilometers since we got started on public roads. We have put the Waymo driver through over 16 billion, with a B, kilometers of simulation. And we've been testing Waymo in over 25 different cities in the US. And I'm gonna share with you what we're up to recently, later on in the presentation, but I wanted to get you up to speed now on an important bit of our history. There's a really interesting pivot that Waymo made several years ago that led to this focus we have on fully autonomous driving technology, where no human interaction is required instead of systems that still require licensed human drivers to oversee driver assist technology. Back in 2009, the Google founders hired a small group of engineers to start a self-driving car project. And they challenged the team to drive autonomously on a series of 10 different 160 kilometer routes around the San Francisco Bay Area. And the founders set the bar really high. They had to complete each of these drives without a disengagement. They had to be completed without any human intervention. And somehow, remarkably, within about a year, they completed that challenge. And you can see some of the examples of that driving in that video I just shared. Now, I think that would be an impressive demo video for any self-driving car company today, but yet that work was done about 10 years ago. Now, that early success gave the team confidence to commercialize the technology somehow, to find a product concept and bring it to market. So they had an, an initial hypothesis, and their first idea was to introduce a product that would drive on autobahns on its own. Hands-free driving there was gonna be okay, but driver oversight was still required. And we even had a name for it. Anyone wanna guess what it is? Autopilot, that's what we called it. We recruited dozens of eager employees with long highway commutes to give it a try. But they had to agree to three different stipulations. First, they had to agree to pay attention at all times and keep their eyes on the road. 
It was okay for them to be hands off on the steering wheel, but they had to be alert. And the final stipulation was if they didn't follow the first two, we would take the car away from them because we'd be watching them with a camera inside the car. Anyone want to guess how that experiment went? I'm going to show you. This is in the first week. This fellow thought it was okay to text. He's not paying attention. This person thought it was okay to charge his phone from his laptop. He's trying to pay attention, but he's really struggling. This person is putting on makeup, and here, I believe, an eyelash curler is coming into play. But this was the very serious one. I know those first three seem a little bit funny, but this driver fell asleep <laughs> at 90 kilometers per hour with beta technology after all those warnings and stipulations. So you know what we did? We shut down the autopilot project. We shut it down after just a few weeks because of what we had seen. And here's the thing. It was actually really good news because we had gained a priceless insight into a real conundrum with this technology, a real dilemma. Our autopilot system was very advanced, more advanced than anything on the road today. It had radar, it had LIDAR, it had cameras, it had a massive onboard computer. It was so good, though, that our human drivers became too comfortable too quickly. And that's a real problem, and that's the conundrum. The better that you make driver assist technology, the more likely that the human behind the wheel will not be able to monitor it. So we pivoted with that incredibly valuable insight in 2013, and we had inspired resolve at that point. We believed that the only way to solve the problem of roadway safety was to take the human out of the loop completely. This was the only way to get it done. We committed at that point to full autonomy, no driver monitoring, nor driver's license required. Now, at the time, this was the only project in the world that had three critical ingredients. The first was the team had a commitment to deliver fully autonomous driverless technology, and there was no distraction from trying to develop at the same time driver assist technology. We also had a large team of software engineers, and they were at that time already at the cutting edge of AI and machine learning techniques. The final point was that we had made a commitment at that point to deliver not just the software, but also the hardware to build the driver. So we were developing on our own, our own mapping technologies, our own radar, and our own LiDAR technologies. All three of those were super important for us. So we set off in 2013 with the little firefly you see there. This was a clean sheet approach to develop a low-speed vehicle that could move people around cities using what was, at that time, our third generation technology. It took us two years, but by 2015, we had completed the world's first fully driverless road drive on public roads in Austin, Texas. And in 2016, with that landmark ride under our belts, um, we spun out of the Google universe and became Waymo, an independent company inside of Alphabet. We retired Firefly at that point and moved forward with our first automotive collaboration. This was with FCA and their Pacifica minivan, which used the fourth generation of our hardware. At this point, we'd realized our future wasn't about becoming a car company, and it wasn't about competing with car companies either. We saw our role very clearly. Our role was to provide Waymo drivers for the world. And we would seek to enable, not disrupt, but enable existing companies in the automotive space. Not just car companies, but also other companies in adjacent spaces like Avis and AutoNation, who help us manage our fleet of cars, while we also sought to serve the needs of companies. In 2018, we partnered with JLR to add a second vehicle to the Waymo fleet. This was the Jaguar I-PACE, integrating our fifth generation Waymo driver. This is an all-new system. We're just getting it on the road now. It adds four-season sensor capability, new sensing modalities, and a revolutionary new LiDAR that achieves another order of magnitude improvement and cost per function compared to what we have on the road now with our fourth-generation technology. 
and working with our partner Magna, we just opened the world's first factory that's 100% dedicated to the production of fully autonomous driver integration. And we put that plant right in the heart of the auto industry in the US, in Detroit, Michigan. We've built 30 of these cars so far. Um, they're now at our facilities in California, gearing up for development and testing. And we're working very closely with our friends at JLR, tier one suppliers like Bosch and Valio and Osram are also helping us get up and going. The first Pacificas and that iPACE will be put to work in Waymo's own network, which we're just launching now in Phoenix, Arizona. But we're also planning to partner with others to put the Waymo driver to work. So earlier this year, we signed an agreement with Renault and Nissan, and here we're gonna explore mobility services for passengers and deliveries in Japan and France. And we'll share with everyone more about that work as we make more progress going forward. But what about Waymo's own service? We got that started in April 2017 when we first invited folks to join our early rider program. And after a year and a half of learning from them, we took the next big step in December 2018 by introducing our public ride hailing system, which we call Waymo One, which now has over a thousand riders who hail Waymos via our mobile app. Now we've been testing at small scale in fully driverless mode since 2017 with no trained human drivers behind the wheel. And we've begun to responsibly ramp our driverless offerings to our riders in the Metro Phoenix areas. I'll tell you, one of the things we love the most at Waymo is watching the reactions of first time riders as they experience this fully driverless world for the first time. I thought you might like to see what that looks like. We've got a short video to share here. That is nuts. It's pretty crazy. It's, it's like there's cool. a ghost, a ghost at the steering wheel. I kind of feel like royalty being paraded around in this thing. School zone. Look at these guys. Look it over. Are they? <laughs> no driver. No! What? This way my thing is cruising. <laughs> Pretty sharp turn. We made it pretty smoothly. Thank you. Do I say thank you? We're here. We made it. And I didn't have to drive. Thank you. That's sweet. We've learned a lot from our riders. Um, so, what does the future hold for Waymo and the deployment of our technology? Well, with the hope of our partners, we plan to deploy Waymo globally. As an independent um, application of our technology, we're going to be addressing many different business models. The first that we've talked about here is ride hailing. It's an important first application, provides accessibility for a lot of different people around the world. But our technology can also make trucking safer and stronger and fill a pressing need for drivers in many parts of the world. Now, we've already conducted road tests of the Waymo driver in these big Class 8 trucks in the US, and we're working closely with the ecosystem in trucking, which includes shippers, of course, the truck makers, and the suppliers, to ensure a successful deployment there. Delivery of goods is also an important opportunity, and we're already testing that now with partners like AutoNation, where we're moving car parts from dealership to dealership. Some of our OEM partners are also interested in applying this technology for folks who still want to own their own cars. And we're working with them right now to serve those needs. Listen, our journey has been a long one. And there's still a really long road ahead. And we've learned a couple of things, a couple of really important things over these past 10 years. The first is every step matters. And while early progress in this space can seem rapid, Remember, it took us just one year to do that impressive demo video. We found that achieving scale and safety and robustness and understanding what it takes to delight those riders who we are in service to takes time, a lot of time, and massive effort. There are no shortcuts to getting this done. Second, we've learned that we can't do this on our own. 
And we're grateful for the help of all of our partners and the communities that we've served. They've helped us embrace the many possibilities of autonomy. And in so doing, have helped us realize a bigger vision because we think there is a really, really big vision here. We can together redefine many aspects of our world, from commuting to logistics and safety, accessibility, productivity, even urban design, and so much more. Thanks, everyone, for your time today. We're grateful for this opportunity. We're looking forward to working with many of you as we take these next steps together for the benefit of all. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>